Hello, my name is Maxim and today I want to talk about variables in Golang. We will explore like the basic variables such as boolean, integer, float and strings. And let's start from the boolean. Boolean uh, variables can have only two values, like true or, or false. And let's try to create some of them. There is the multiple way how we can do it. So first, for example, let's create variable a, which will be type of bool. So this is the first way. Another way is to let's create b, which will be value of true. And the third way it will be c, which will be equal to false. So here we created uh, three variables. Uh, in the first example, we are not defining any value for this variable. That means it will use the zero value. And for Boolean zero value, it's uh, false. And now let's try to print each of those values and they type. So I'm going to use printf uh, to print that. And inside I will specify v and t to specify the value and uh, type. And I'm going to print aa and duplicate this line three times, two times to show the value of b and value of c. Now let's try to run the code. And I also need to add slash and at the end to have the new line because it's hard to read the output. Now let's run and what we got. For the first A, we got false bool, true bool, and false bool. Everything has to be described. Also, I can always change. For example, I have the A, which has zero value. I can set it to the true, and I can rerun, and it shows the true. So Boolean variables is used in the conditions when you need to check something, like if something equal, to something it usually return like true or false where you can compare it's useful for the tests so next value uh, next variable that's the integer there is the multiple type of the integer there is uh, like i think six of them there is the signed integer and unsigned so i can create let's create signed and unsigned so to create unsigned i'm going to use a U int, for example, I have multiple options. U int, U int 16, 32, 64, 8. I can use U int 32 and I can immediately set some value. Because if I will do in, in the previous example, if I'm going to specify B equal 32, it will automatically uh, choose the type of integer, not the U int. And let's create another one. So I can define something for B. So B can be something like int 64. And I can do another one, C, which will be just int 32. And let's do something. And also there is our typical way how we can do it uh, without specifying uh, the type. Let's try. And final way, it's just without var keyword at all. And now let's print those values again. I'm going to use printf to do that. And in brackets, I'm going to specify percent, sorry, quotes, percent v, percent t. And now I specify a and a duplicate this multiple time and replace everywhere. So here will be BB, then CC, D and D, and E, E. Okay, now let's run. And as usually I forgot to add slash N to add the new line because printf do not add new line automatically. Okay. And as you may see, in those cases where we specified u int int, it's used like exact type, but where we like do not specify this, it just choose the int automatically. 
But what's the difference between you int and int? A difference in the range which uh, we can use in those in those variables. For example, let's take u int eight, and let's take integer eight. So here, I, I'm going to delete everything else, and I would just this temporary command those lines. So right now we have u int and int. And the difference, what value can we put here? For example, for int, we can put eight bytes. So that means that we can store here number from minus 128 up to 127. But for u int, we cannot use a number with minus. So that means that we can use here only from zero to 255. Let's try um, to, to set those value and print I'm going to use this time print line because I'm going to specify just print A and print B. And if I will print right now, everything will work totally fine. But let's try to specify here something like minus 32. And immediately I got the error, but because Golang compiler immediately detect that. But if I will run like the same error, I cannot use minus 32 for you in but I can use up to 255 here. If I will go to finder 56, that will be the error again. So that's clear. And now with you int, I can use here minus 32, sorry, with int, no problems. But let me try to specify 129 or even 128. And this is not going to work. So I can specify 127, everything will be fine. And we have also you in 16, in six, um, sorry, 32, I think. Yeah, 16, 32, and 64. It's like how many bytes we can have in those numbers and bigger, uh, like, bigger the number, we can store a bigger range in, the, in this variable. Also for uh, type uh, integer, we can use mathematic operations. But to be able to do them, we need to have them in this one type. For example, if I have here right now u int and int, and I want to add them, this is not going to work because mismatch of types. And same even, for example, if I'm going to use something like int and int 8, this is not going to work. I need to have everything the same. So I will just put everywhere int. And now, as you may see, no errors. And let me duplicate this a few times. I can do minus here. I can do star slash and percent. So here is the all mathematic op operations. So it's like the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and reminder. Let's now execute the code, but I'm going to use a bit lower values, such like that. And let's try. So first three results is expected, like 3 plus 10, 13, minus 7, um, multiply, multiply 30, but divide, we got the 3. And this is because we cannot like use the reminder in, in, uh, in integers, because it will be like 3 and reminder 1. But we have this comment, which will calculate that for us. So we have here a reminder. Uh, next type of the numbers, that's float. Float, this is the um, numbers with, with comma. So I have float 32 and float 64. I can create them in the same way. I can directly specify or I can do like B, but I need to specify the comma. Otherwise it will be detected as string, I'm sorry, as integer. And the final way I can do something like this. Now let's print them. So you see, uh, when I specify directly that was float 32, when I haven't specified it was float 64. And we have a uh, same mathematic operation, but besides reminder. 
Uh, let's let's use let's try to use them. So probably I can just revert. Uh, no, it will be okay. Let's let's try. I'm going to just do this and change the value to float sixty four. Load 64 and now I have the same command beside this because it said operator percent is not defined. I'm going to delete that and here we got expected results but I can add something like comma here, comma here and even in this case we got kind of what we expect. Uh, and final type which we're going to talk today, this is the string. So I'm going to clean up here, but I will keep those print statements. And there is also multiple ways to define the string as usually. So I can specify string and for, for example, hello world. I can specify B, but this time without string, it will be hello. And I can specify C will be the world. So there is this three way and let me uncomment those values and print what will we get. So each time that was the string and it's printed the text. Also for, for string we have one like operation which we can perform. This is uh, add like it's called string concatenation. So let's let's try it. So I can just do something like b plus c and I need to comment this and let's run I got hello world if I add here space I get hello world so let's expect that what is a bit unusual uh, maybe for the string that I can uh, use indices like in the same way as we as we do with the arrays to access individual element of the string. So how can I do it? I can do something like print line also, and I can just print a and I specify what element I want and start from the zero. So for example, h will be zero, e will be one. So I can type zero and I would expect here to get the string, but really I would receive the amount of bytes. Uh, this is the UTF. So if I will search UTF table for something on the number 60, sorry, 72, I would find uh, that it's correspond to capital letter H. Uh, if I want to translate this to the string, I can add converting here, something like string, string. And this time I should receive the capital letter H. Okay. And what is also can be done with the strings is to uh, transform the string to the array of bytes. So let's try. So I can do B. But before we do that, let's try another thing. If like can we replace for example in the, if this be array I can specify the index and I can specify something like I want to replace this to the B but this not going to work let's try we got the error cannot assign to the, to the zero but the type of bytes first is expect the bytes so I can specify here something like byte and I can specify one two three let's try but it's not not working anyway uh, but what we can do is to create array of the bytes. So I can do array of the bytes from this from this list. And let's print. Print B. And as you may see, I've got the list of the bytes. This is the Unicode uh, number where you can find each of those elements on the Unicode table. I can search the example. For example, here I have the open uh, Unicode character table and let's search for 72. 72, this is the capital letter H. 101, this is the E. So 
all of these bytes correspond to some Unicode character table. And let's try to replace, I'm not sure if this will work, but let's do, I don't know, let's do this one. No, <coughs> let's do something simple. Let's take another number, letter like W. Oh, I would expect this would open, no? Mm, I don't see, oh, it's, it's 57. So let's try now to replace B. So I'm going to print here B. Here I'm going to print, uh, what I'm going to do is to replace the B number zero, and I'm going to replace as byte, and what number we got? 57, 57. And then I can print the B, and I can convert the B to the string, and I can print the initial string. Let's try. Uh, so in the first example, we got the full list. In the second example, but that was not the B because that's not correct the number. I'm not sure how to open it from here. Let's, so it will be 57. Yeah, 57, you see that's number nine. So let's use number nine. So here it printed the new array. Then I converted this array to the string. I've got nine hello world. But if I print the original string, nothing was changed. Uh, that's all what I wanted to show today. Thank you for your attention. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel to do not miss new video. Have a nice day.